Hey y'all, Mr. Kyle, Myers Mathematics, and let's just jump right into this worksheet on solving quadratic equations by factoring. So, if we're going to solve by factoring, then normally the first thing I would be looking for is to see if we can factor, but the first few are already going to be factored for us. So, it's... Um, kind of already kind of already done for you when when you're trying to solve anything you just need to know if there's more than one of that kind of letter if there is then you need to factor if not then you can just kind of solve it so the reason why these are a little easier than ones that we already have to try to factor from the start is because if you multiply two things right so there's one thing here and one thing here can you think of two numbers that are both not zero that multiply to zero? No, right? You could pause if you want to think a little on that a little longer. But no, right? I mean, you can get close, but if you don't multiply by a zero, you won't get a zero. So that means that either k plus 1 could equal zero, or k minus 5 could equal 0. This is the whole point of setting it equal to 0 before we factor. You can factor something before you set it equal to 0, but when you set it equal to 0, it's this interesting property called the zero product property, which just says what I said earlier. If you multiply two numbers and you get 0, one of them has to be 0, or both. So, either k could equal negative 1, or k could equal 5, right? So I either subtract 1 on both sides to solve for that one, or add 5 on both sides to solve for that one, right? So I didn't show the in-between step because we're on factoring, so factoring is already something that's hard enough without uh, breaking it down even more into, you know, step-by-step step with, the, with the, the solving and stuff like that. But um, it's the same thing here, right? So a plus 1 equal to 0, a plus 2 equal to 0. I'll go ahead and show the in-between steps because we're not doing anything too crazy yet. Minus 1, minus 2. So a is equal to negative 1, and a is equal to negative 2. a is equal to two different things. There are two different numbers that, when plugged into a, make this equation work. Okay? Well, what about if I end up with something else like this? All right. So now this is a little harder to solve. 4k plus 5 equal to 0. k plus 1 equal to 0. So I want to subtract 5 from both sides first. At this point, we're basically just regular solving. And I divide both sides by 4. So k is equal to negative 5 fourths. Whereas over here, all I have to do is subtract 1 on both sides. And I get my two answers. Same thing for here, and I'm going to go ahead and start uh, not showing those in-between steps again. As we go along, what I'll normally do is show less and less of the in-between steps that I showed on earlier ones, so that you can start to see what it would look like as you progress. As you do more of these problems, what would it look like once you get to where you can solve them a little faster? And so that's pretty much my idea with every every one of these uh, worksheets, which I have a whole series on, by the way. This is rounding off the end of a series on Algebra 1 CUDA software worksheets, all the worksheets that you can find on kudasoftware.com. But the whole point is that your teacher likes to use these worksheets. I know, because I was a teacher, and all my teacher friends were like, oh my gosh, use CUDA, it's so easy. You just print off the worksheets, and then boom, you have your lesson. And I was like, oh, there's more to it than that. Stop. Thank you. <laughs> right, so you you just uh, you just you just solve it out, and your teacher will want to use these uh, these worksheets and give them to you either as classwork and or homework. Okay, now we're getting to the part where we actually have to set it equal to zero and factor it. We really jumped up by two steps here because not only is it not equal to zero, but it's also not factored yet. So we kind of jumped up by quite a bit in uh, in difficulty there. I want to set it equal to zero first. Okay, so I'm going to write these steps off to the side because 
the 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 first four were really just kind of already solved for you. So I'm gonna write these steps as I go here. I'm gonna wanna get it equal to zero. Right, so you want it equal to zero. Or zero equals, it doesn't really matter if everything's on the right hand side. So we're gonna do that. And in order to do that on number five, I have to add five to both sides. Okay, so then I have x squared minus eleven x plus nineteen plus five is twenty-four. And now it's equal to zero. So now I want to factor. So step two, we want to factor. And there's a lot of in-between steps with factoring. The first thing I would always say to do with factoring is to look for a greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. There won't be one most of the time in my uh, experience of doing these. A lot of times there isn't a GCF unless it's like specifically a practice on GCF. But nevertheless, it doesn't hurt to look and there isn't one. Two of them have x's, but this doesn't have an x. And 24 and 11 don't have anything in common, much less there's no number in front of x squared. Which actually is a good thing, because once you check for GCF, then you move on to regular factoring. So this could be like a difference of squares, or a difference of squares. squeeze that in a difference of squares or you might have like standard trinomial factoring right so a equal to 1 or not equal to 1 trinomial factoring and that's what we have here it's the most common one and then you have um, all kinds of other stuff too so synthetic division long division so synthetic synthetic um, or long division. They kind of accomplish the same thing. Synthetic division does it faster. Long division of polynomials um, is a little slower, but it works on everything. Long division. So, there we go. Long division. And then the only other thing I can think of would be like factoring by grouping. And I would say this is last because Unless you're doing something specifically on factoring by grouping, I wouldn't really normally think to look for that. Um, and there has to be like a specific thing for it to even work. So it's like a really obscure kind of kind of factoring method. Not really recommended to, to look for that. And that's pretty much all the different kinds of factoring. I'm leaving out maybe a few here and there, but that, that's all the main stuff. So what we're going to do is option T. We have regular trinomial factoring here. What we want to do for that kind of factoring is we want two numbers that multiply 24. Okay, so let's say 1 and 24. And those same two numbers have to add to negative 11. Well, the only way I can add to negative 11 is if both numbers are negative. Negative 1 plus negative 24 is negative 25. That's not going to work. Okay, well, what about 2? Yeah, 2 divided by 24 is 12 times, right? And I want to keep the negatives because I need to add up to negative 11. Negative 2 plus negative 12 is negative 14. Getting closer, what about negative 3? Negative 3 and negative 8. That does work. It multiplies to the positive 24, and it adds up to negative 11. Once you find that, then you're basically done. You just put the letter in front of each factor. Notice I gave myself a lot of space for my factors. That way I could finish up that factoring pretty easily without having to use a lot of board space. I'm just going to kind of limit the board space here. And that that's factoring. So that was step two. Right? So that was step two. And step three you just solve, which is basically all we did for problems one through four. So we're going to solve each one. x minus three equal to zero. So x is equal to 3. x minus 8 equal to 0. So x is equal to 8. Whew. Okay, so I put all the steps with that. That took a little bit longer. Let's do it without having to write the steps off to the side each time and see how long this takes. Ready? And go. x5 minus 5. Yes, that's step 1. 15 minus 5 is 10. Factors of 10. Now, you can always just think of what the factors would be. And that's totally fine. Remember, I'm going to progress just kind of naturally as I go along here. 
So I'm just going to pretend like I don't know how to like just think of the factors and just check all of them. Because if you're stuck, this is a really good thing to do. Just check everything. Right? 1 and 10 add to 11. That's not going to work. But 2 and 5 add to 7. Okay, well, we're done with step 2. And then we just set each one equal to 0. And, fun fact, you can actually just take the opposite of the number, and that's the answer. So negative 2, negative 5. Those are answers. Okay. 7 and 8. Okay. So, basically the same stuff still. Nothing new is happening. n squared minus 10n plus 24. Right? So I'm going to start to do some of these in my head here as we go. 1 and 24, no. 2 and 12, no, because I'm adding, right? I'm adding up two, two negatives. It would be negative 2, negative 12. Uh, 3 and 8, no. 4 and 6, yes. Right? So I'm kind of just cycling through them as I go. So then n is going to be equal to 4 or 6. Okay. So then over here, we want to subtract 6 on both sides. Subtract 6, and that's going to be minus 18. 1 and 18. This time we're going to be subtracting. You're always, you're always adding, right? So so you're always, it makes sense to always say that you're adding them up, up the factors, but the factors are going to have different signs. So when you actually go to put the numbers together, you are subtracting. If we're, if that makes sense. So, for instance, here I'm trying to make uh, 3, and they have to have opposite signs. If I made the 18 negative, that would give me a negative when I subtract. If I make the larger number, the, the number that's further from 0, if I make that number positive, then my answer would be positive. And I want it to be positive. I want it to be positive 3. Negative 2 and 9? Nope. Negative 3 and 6? Yes. And let's get that. So then n is equal to positive 3 and negative 6. Okay, we're trucking right along now. So then we want to, actually, you know what? On this one, there's sort of like a step zero I forgot to mention. If everything divides by something, just divide everything by that. And that'll make our lives a little easier here. Divide everything by six. And then you're dividing both sides evenly. Okay, don't want to get that over though. But that was, that was like a step zero bonus it really really helps to make the problem easier because otherwise I'd have to try to do a different kind of factoring for that n squared there which I want to avoid doing that kind of factoring because that kind of factoring takes like two to three extra steps than the regular factoring so definitely don't want to do that let's get that and then n is equal to negative one and four Bada bing, bada boom. All of that divides by 7. So I want to go ahead and do that. r squared minus 2r equal to negative 1. So then r squared minus 2r is uh, not equal to, sorry. Uh, add 1 to both sides. Okay. And then the factors here are going to be negative 1 and negative 1. And you could write that as r minus 1 squared, but the point isn't to factor it completely. The point is to solve. If you were trying to factor completely, I would say write it as r minus 1 squared. And that's normally the most correct. But if we're trying to solve, we don't need to put those together. It's just, you know, you just get two, two ones, right? So just r is equal to 1. That's it. And that's okay. Sometimes you get an answer. Sometimes you get two answers. Sometimes you get no answer. All of those are possible options. We could have 0, 1, or 2 answers. All right, we add 15 to both sides. All right, 1 and 15, no. 3 and 5, yes. Okay, 3 and 5. So then n is equal to negative 3 or negative 5. Not so bad. But then I spoke too soon because now we're on 12. It looks really gnarly, but it's still going to fall under step one, what I do to this. I still want to get it equaled to zero. And I can actually do 
both of these at the same time. I can add 30 to both sides and subtract 11r from both sides at the same time. You can do that, right? Because even though we don't know what r is, if you take anything and subtract it by itself, it goes away, equals 0. Even if you don't know what a letter is supposed to equal, if you subtract it from itself, it goes away because any number does that. So even letters do that as well. All right. So then this is equal to 0 now. And I have 5r squared. Negative 44 minus 11 is negative 55r. 120 plus 30 is 150. So now, now I can divide everything by 5. So I guess it's a step 0, but it's also just a thing to check for as you go. Like if you can simplify, definitely simplify. It makes your life a little easier. So that's 20 plus 30 now. We want to do, let's see, 1 and 30, no, 2 and 15, no, uh, what's next, 3 and 10, no, 4 go in, no, 5 go in, yes, 5 goes in 6 times, and that is the one that works. So, R is equal to 5, 4, 6. There we go. Okay. Over here, same thing. Um, I would say probably add 5k squared to both sides. This kind of matters because you could also add 4k to both sides, but then you'd have a negative k, and then you'd want to factor that out. So doing it this way, and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so negative 4 plus 5 is 1, so this is just k squared, minus 8k. And then negative 3 minus 3 actually cancels on both sides, so I just get it equal to 0. Okay, well, that's fine, because remember, step 1 is to get it equal to 0, which we did. Step 2 is to factor, and the first thing you do with factoring is you check for a GCF. We haven't had one yet. Now we do that comes first. Because once we do the GCF, we're actually done. We don't have anything else to do. K is equal to 0, right? 0 times anything is 0, or 8. All right, that one was a little different. Okay, so now we want to subtract b squared on both sides, or sorry, uh, subtract uh, 3b on both sides. So there's 5. That's going to be 5 and 7. I want it to get positive 2, so negative 5 and a positive 7. Equal to 0. b is equal to 5 and 6 there. Okay. Very, very cool, very cool. Oops, hit the wrong button there. Okay, so we, now we want to put the 5 on the other side. 3r squared minus 16r minus 12 equal to 0. Okay, now we've hit that point where we are going to have to factor it a little differently. So if you're doing regular trinomial factoring, let me start off at like step 2. So... We'll, we'll do this uh, in, in different colors here. So we'll say regular. We'll start off with step two. Um, if you had regular factoring, what we've been doing for regular factoring is we get the factors of C. Right, so factors of C. Once we find the factors of C, we add them up, right? So we add them up. Add them up which might mean subtract if the signs are different. And then we want to match the that sum, right? So you want to you want to find the sum that equals b for those factors. And if you're going to write this down in, in your notes, I would probably write it out in a way that makes sense to you because if you just copy down what I say, then you're going to look at it later and you're going to be like, "What was that?" So write it down in a way that makes sense to you. This is the way that makes sense to me to write it down in shorthand. Uh, just as we go here, this is not a video specifically on factoring, more like solving with factoring. So I'm not like really diving deep here, kind of just covering the steps. So you find the factors, you add them up, you want the sum that equals the middle number, and then you just break it up from there. Okay, so that that's basically how you do it if you're doing regular factoring, right? You break it up from there. So you would say um, AX plus M, M 
times ax plus n. A being the number in front of the r squared. Okay, so this this is basically normal factoring. Then, if we wanted to do uh, more than just that, then there's like a pre-step and a post-step. So the pre-step to finding the factors of c is to multiply a and c. So we want to multiply a and c. Then we would find factors of a and c, right, of, of that number together. Then you add them up, then you find the sum, you want the sum that equals to, to the middle number, and then you do this step. When you're doing this step in your regular factoring, you just have x because a is 1. But this is important to have here because then step 6, for the extended factoring, for when the thing in front of the squared term is not 1, you need to divide out any G of GCX. So you're going to divide, not factor, you divide, divide out any GCFs. Because the way this method works is you create some extra factors when A is not 1. Let me, let me show you what I mean. So let's follow the steps here. 3 times 12, negative 36, right? That's step 1. Step 2, we want to find the factors of that. Okay, so 1 and 36, 2 and 18. 3 and 12, so on and so on, but I already see the, the factor that's going to work here. So um, plus, plus, plus the 2 and the minus 18, right? That gives you negative 16 when you add 2 uh, minus 18 or negative 18 plus 2. I don't know, however you want to think about it. So that those are the factors we want. And then we're on step 5 now. So step 5, we do a x r is our x variable, plus m, the, the first factor, and then a, x, plus the other factor. Okay? So normally when you're doing regular factoring, you don't really think about it, but you've got kind of a double factor there. It's just that it's 1 normally, so you don't have to think about it. But you do want to think about it when you're doing this way. Divide by 3. Divide out the extra factor. That gives me the answer. And then we've done the factoring step. Right? So that was that was a longer factoring step, gotta admit. And then this is gonna be uh, subtract two from both sides and then divide by three. So r is equal to negative two thirds or six. Ooh, okay. So that's extended factoring. I like to call that one two truths and a lie. I have a whole video on that. And hopefully if I remember, I'll put that in the description below. Otherwise, you can just find it with a quick search on my channel. Um, but I hopefully we'll remember to do that. So that'll be in there. Maybe I'll leave a note for myself over here off to the side so I don't forget. Because I say stuff, and then I'll forget to do it. Unless I write it down. So let me write it down. Let me leave myself a little note. Leave myself a little note to do that. So we want the uh, two truths and a lie. Two truths. All right, so I'll leave a video for that. And then, uh, um, of course, the, the link to go to the rest of the videos in this series as well. Okay, so next one. Looks like we're going to have the same situation happening here. It is equal to 0, plus 15b, plus 6. 6 times 6 is 36. And we've already done factors of 36 over here, so we can kind of just cheat and look over at what we already did. 1 and 36, no. 2 and 18, no. 3 and 12, no. What about uh, 4? We haven't tried 4 yet. 4 and 9. Uh, yeah. yeah, that would work. Right, if they're both negative, they add up to negative 13. Okay, cool. So then we have ax plus m and n being the, the factors. So 6b, 6b, then you divide out the GCF, so the GCF here would be 2, I divide by 2, and I almost put a plus there, mine is still, just for right now, divide out by 2, divide out by 3. So then I get two answers, 
and let me uh give myself some some more space over here maybe okay so then the answers are going to be b is equal to i would add two and divide by three i would add three to both sides and divide by two so two thirds and three halves okay and that's how you do that factoring again do it again over here 7k squared minus 6k subtract 3 from both sides is equal to 0 so then we just do the first step in factoring which is gcf 7k minus 6 and then we just get k is equal to 0 add 6 to both sides divide by 7 6 7 that's it for that one we want to get them on both sides here so 35k squared minus 23k minus 4 on both sides and then we don't have anything to divide out, so we go ahead and multiply those up. That's going to be, what, 105? That's right. Yeah, sounds right. And we want factors of that that give us 22. Yikes. Okay. Well, it's not going to be 3 and 35, 4, 5, maybe 5. Let's try 5. If I divide by 5, that would be, what, 21? No, that's not going to work. Okay. Uh, 6, 7, 7. 7 could work. 7 and 15. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And then we've got a 35 here. 35, not 31. 35. 35. Good gracious. I'm great today. And then we divide by 7. 5k minus 1. Divide by 5. And you would get a uh, 7k minus 3. So then we have two answers. We have add 1, divide by 5. Add 3, divide by 7. Okay. And we are almost done. This is the last four problems here. So over here, kind of the same thing going on as earlier. We have, that's already equal to 0. Just factor up an x. So x is equal to 0, or subtract 2, divide by 7. All right, then over here, it looks like it's actually going to be easier to maybe get the b squared over onto the left-hand side. Um, although you normally want the b squared term to be positive. So I don't know, it's kind of a toss-up here. Kind of a toss-up. I guess I'll go ahead and just put everything on the left-hand side like I normally do. Do it the other way, though. Minus 27b. Plus 18. I'm going to add 18 to both sides. Okay. And looks like there's no common factors, so I just go for it. 180. So 10 plus 18 is 28. That's already pretty close. So what I'm going to try to do is try to get something that's a little bit, that's, that's like 10 and 18, but not quite, right? So how about 9? Does go into 9. How about 9 and 20? Oh, well, that's too far, right? That's the wrong way. I want numbers that are closer together so that when I add them, I get a smaller number. So that's, that's not closer together. That's closer together. Further apart, actually. What about 11? Well, no, it doesn't go into 11. But 12. I think it goes into 12. Maybe. Yeah, I think it does. Because uh, 18 is 6 times 3. Right, so this is what I'm thinking in my head. 18 is 6 times 3. 10 is 5 times 2. So then if I take the 6 and the 2, I get a 12. And then that would leave 5 and 3, which is 15. And that does add to 27, if I make myself think. Whew, there we go. Okay, so 10b. 10b. Divide by 2. Divide by 5. So then I get 5b minus 6. And divide by 5, I get 2b minus 3. And then I have two answers again. I have b is equal to 6 fifths and 3 halves. All right, last two. And if this has been helpful, there's a ton of other videos in this series. All of the videos on Algebra 1 CUDA worksheet stuff. If you want these actual worksheets with the solutions in them, I'll be putting those on my website, myersmathematics.com. Link in the description below as well as a free guide called The Five Math Mistakes Everyone Makes. 
and how to avoid them. Long title, but very helpful. It's right at the front of the web page there. You can go grab that for free. And there's a ton of other stuff on the website as well, or you can search other YouTube videos. And hey, if you don't see a YouTube video on a certain topic or a certain question, just let me know. You can uh, either email me. I've got my email in the description below, or you can respond in the comments on the YouTube. And just let me know what problem you have that you want me to solve. And I would be happy to solve it. So 8 times 21, that's going to be 1, 6, 8. Hmm. Well, 8 plus 21 is 29. We want a number that's a little bit higher than that. So we're going to want numbers that are further apart. So let's backtrack from there. What about 7? Well, 7 would work because 21 is 7 times 3. Then it would be 3 times 8 is 24. Not high enough, though. Let's try 6. <gasps> or does it go in? It does, because that's 3. 3 times 3 is 6. And then you'd have 7 times 4, which is 28. Getting closer. Not quite there yet. What about 5? Well, no, 5 is not going to go in because neither of those numbers divide by 5. Uh, so then what about 4? Let's try 4, because half of 8 is, is, uh, is, is 4, right? So then you'd have 2 times 21 is 42. Oh, we're definitely getting close now. That's going to be, what, 46? We're almost there. So close. What about 3? What about 3? You could also have started from 1, right? Um, so that, that's another thing you could have done. But uh, I'm kind of going backwards here, just because, I guess. Uh, 3 would go in. That'd be 7 times 8 is 56. Ah, I think we have a winner here. Okay, so 3 and 56. But I didn't have them quite in the right spots here, because I want to put an 8 in front of those, each of those. So it was 3 and 56. 3 and 56. And let's check to make sure that was, that was working. It was 3, so then that's 7 times 8. Yeah, okay. And then we, um... Divide out any lies. That one is eight. Just like this. And you actually don't have to divide out GCFs if you're strictly solving. So this is how you properly factor. If you wanted to just solve, it would be fine to set 8x plus 56 equal to zero and solve it that way. And that's one less step. But those factors wouldn't be correct. So I don't know how your teacher would feel about that. So maybe if you're not sure, or if you think they're pretty lenient, and you want to go for it, go for it. But I did warn you. So let me explain. This would be subtract 3, divide by 8. And then subtract 7, I'll plus 1. OK, and then we have the last one. I want to add 7a. And we want to subtract 3. Didn't really have any space to put that anywhere, so I just kind of put it over there. 15a squared, minus 3 plus 7, okay, leave it there, then I have 45, and then I want to find two things that multiply, that also give me 4, how about 9 and 5, 9 and 5, I want to get positive 4, put 15 there, 15 there, by 5, divide by 3, and again, you don't really have to do that step, so actually, let me, let me show you what that would look like. You'll get the same answer, and you can just uh, say, okay, well, I would add 5 to both sides, and then I would get, um, and then it'd be over 15, right, which would simplify to 1 third, and that's fine. The other one would be subtract 9, divide by 15, and that would simplify to negative 3 fifths. So you get the same thing either way, because we end up dividing out that uh, that GCF as we solve it. So that GCF goes away as we go to solve it. So you can skip that step as well. There's another way to do it that's even trickier of a method that's a little bit faster than this method. But I don't like it, because I think people get like get used to that method, and then they don't know how to factor like by itself. So I'm not a fan of that other one not going to show it. I think I have done it a few times here and there on some other uh, videos on factoring and solving with factoring and stuff. So it's it's a little bit faster, but I don't think it's really worth it because I, I've seen people do it and then they just don't know how to, they just think that's how you're supposed to factor it as well. Right? So it gets a little conflated. So anyways, that is the 
video for today. Hope it's been helpful. As always, like any good YouTuber, I'll tell you to like, subscribe, and smash the bell for notifications. But, uh, you know, not really as much of a YouTuber as in just somebody who's trying to help you with your math. So, not, not caring as much about optimizing for, for YouTube views and things like that. Just whatever I think is going to be most helpful to you guys with the time that I have. So, without further ado, I'll see you in the next video.